Dollar bands are a real phenomenon in, in Brooklyn and you see them in other parts of New York City. And what it is is um, you have entire communities. They, they live on the east side of Brooklyn in, in neighborhoods called like Brownsville and East uh, Flatbush and East New York. And there's really poor bus service and there is no subways at all over there. So what they do is um, they rely on these dollar vans to, to get to school, to get to work. And they, they basically are point to point to transportation. I started running the dollar van about 92. I started out illegal, got with a company that got authorization in 96, and then I started my own in 2001. What started it is from the MTA strike that happened in about 90, um, 87 or so. And being in the Caribbean neighborhood here, a lot of these people are used to van service in their native country where vans are picking them up and taking them where they want to go. The guys came up with the ideas had cars or had vans and started running along Flatbush Avenue, Utica Avenue, Church Avenue, even Glenwood, and started picking up people at that time of the strike. And it does, it does catch on. After the strike was over, they continued doing it because it was, they were making money. If it was its own transportation system, it'd be the 20th largest in the U.S. We say get enough on you. We just passed P, man. I'll, I'll make a U turn and take it up. You good? Alright. Oh, what was it? There wasn't any legal vans until uh, on this side until about again um, 96. It may have been a couple of, a year or two before other companies, but the company that I was with was authorized in 95, 96. Um, we had one major city council member that was in support of Dollar Van, which was Una Clark. There was a lot of opposition to it um, and as a member of the city council I recognize that it is not only um, self-employment but that they were also charging less than the normal bus transportation would be. The terrain of the Caribbean is of such that large buses don't work. The mountain range, the narrowness of the streets that were built and so the um, dollar van, as it is known in New York, is the same commuter vans that people use within the Caribbean for their transportation system. It was easy because there was a cultural connection between drivers and riders. I don't only make my salary or my, my money from just driving and picking up people. I try and do other things that the community wants or other businesses that might want to be able to promote their business, promote their product. I knew some of the drivers and got to know them and basically approached them and asked them if, if it would be cool to basically bring a couple cameras along and a wrapper and see what happens. And we went around up and down Flatbush Avenue picking up passengers. They had no idea that they stepped into a music video. This is a good place to get a first break because it was just it was just raw and, and experimental. And I, I think it really showed everybody enjoyed that part of it. One time while we were shooting Dollar Band demos, we were not necessarily uh, stopped by a cop, but a cop came over while we were stopped at an intersection and, and talked to us and asked what we were doing. And we weren't supposed to be there essentially, but. I, we're shooting with small cameras and it's just, you know, three people in a van. And so we started explaining what we were doing and, and it's funny, the cop leaned in and he pulls out his business card and he goes, oh yeah, I'm a DJ, can you guys give me a call? So that, was, that worked out really nice, by the way. Sometimes police department pulls us over and then they tend to have a negative overall picture about dollar van drivers. Those little negative things that may happen to enforcement kind of get the riders them upset because they're not delaying, let's say, an authorized van from getting to the point where they want to get to. We're not supposed to travel amongst the bus ride and pick up people. We're not supposed to stop in the bus stop. We should have a manifest. I think that folks like Winston from Backstreet and a number of the others here in Brooklyn, um, I think that they're very professional at what they do. And for those who come and um, you know don't carry the proper license, don't carry the proper registration, 
and or even the proper plates on their uh, on their vans, then we ask that they be taken off the road. And it's not every time the MTA raise their fare that we raise our fare. But we're trying to deal with the community, what we feel the community can deal with financially and not pressuring them financially.